Welcome to Crime and Wine. I'm Pamela Fagan Hutchins, your host, and this is the show where I talk with other crime fiction writers about the stories of thrills and suspense that will leave you mystified, sometimes horrified, and always wanting more. Please join me in welcoming today's special guest. Well, today's special guest is a friend of mine and a very patient person as um, she has been um, listening to my washing machine run while we chatted and we waited to start the show till it finished. This is the sexy true lives of um, the authors you read, right? Um, well, I'm back in Wyoming and uh, have been in London and Denmark and Sweden and Germany and I can't be happier to be home except that I'm not home. I'm snowed out of my home with two feet of new snow on the ground. Thank you, mom, for letting us come play at your house. So, I am not going to hold you in suspense any longer. I want to welcome today's special guest, Maddie Dalrymple. Hello. Hello, Pamela. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing super now that the, you know, all of the, all of the, like I said, the sexy real life stuff is over here. Uh, I would rather talk about the real life experiences um, or maybe not, which, whichever is the case that went into your latest book, your new Anne Kinnear suspense novel, Be With the Dead. For those of you on video, you are getting to see the beautiful cover of Be With the Dead. This is, what number in the series is this? I mean, it all it reads as standalones, but. Yes, it is number six in the Anne Kinnear suspense novel series. You are, you're rocking along. And okay, so a little bit about just to set up some of the readers that um, are joining us that have really missed out by not reading Anne Kinnear before. Tell us a little bit about her in the series and then we'll talk about the book. Sure. Well, Anne Kinnear is a woman who can sense spirits and she has a business based on that ability that's run by her brother, Mike, and it's all handled in a very professional way, like if you were hiring a, I don't know, an accountant, there are uh, contracts and engagements. And um, I try to make it as unwoo-woo as possible. Uh, <laughs> but it, the series starts out with a sense of death. And the sense of death is sort of like Anne's origin story. And it is the one that is um, most different than the others, because in that one, Anne's abilities are, she's not playing into them as much as she does in the later ones. So it's sort of uh, the documentation of the development of her abilities. And all the books are set either in my neck of the woods, which is outside uh, Philadelphia, or in my other favorite place to go, Maine. Okay, so quick break in before we talk about Be With the Dead. Anne and uh, I mean, Anne, Maddie, my, I always identify people with their characters. So. <laughs> That's okay with me. There, <laughs> there's much overlap, I have to admit. Oh, good. We're going to talk about that. Okay. So last summer, um, I was coming through Philadelphia in uh, you know, pulling a truck with a giant travel trailer on the back and taking three dogs coming home from our house in Maine back to Wyoming. And so I um, hailed up my friend Lisa Reagan and said, let's meet for brunch. And she said, you are right smack dab in the hometown or near there of my good friend, Maddie Dalrymple, who's a fantastic writer. So that's how we met. We were set up kind of on a blind date by Lisa. <laughs> yes, that was, that was fantastic. Lisa Reagan is definitely, I'd say one of the, if not the most generous um, author I know in terms of helping out her fellow authors. She's pretty awesome. And so I knew I'd love you because I love Lisa. And then they put up with my three rowdy dogs um, at brunch because- That was so much fun. <laughs> sort of. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> my dogs are bad. Um, well, not horrible, but they were yeah, bad. they were good. They were very good. <laughs> and so that was how I first decided I was going to dive into both your series, Lizzie Ballard and Anne Kinnear, um, with both feet and just fell in love with them. So I'm so excited to introduce you guys now to number six in the series, Be With The Dead. Tell us a little bit about Be With The Dead before we dive into the behind the scenes, what's from real life stuff. Okay. Well, this will be a good segue. It's kind of hard to separate the two, but um, <laughs> with the other books that I've done, I, I've tapped into my own experiences, but in many of them, I've had to go to other people for uh, subject matter expertise. So a good example of that is book three, The Falcon and the Owl, is based in uh, in Chester County. The books kind of alternate between um, Chester County and Maine, and uh, with Be With the Dead as an exception. Um, but that is about a 
woman who is a aerobatic uh, performer and air racer. And um, I got to do a lot of research on that because I've never done aerobatics or air racing, but I have flown before. I took flying lessons for many years. I was actually the owner of a plane for a brief period of time. Wow! Um, and it's true what they say that the happiest day of any a plane owner's life is the day they buy the plane and the day they sell the plane. Um, and that's a whole other 20 minutes. If, if we ever want to have another glass of wine um, <laughs> over that, I can tell you more detail about that. But uh, Be With the Dead is a book that I was able to pretty much tab entirely into my own experience in order to write because it is about the writing and publishing world. So you guys, when I picked it up, um, I picked it up because it was by Maddie Dalrymple and it was an Ann Kinnear book. I didn't even read the blurb before I picked it up and I start reading it. And as somebody that is either a devoted reader of um, crime fiction, mystery, thriller, suspense novels, or a writer yourself, you'll immediately get the big smiles because um, Anne is being invited into the world of mystery, thriller, suspense, crime fiction. Take it from there, Maddie. <laughs> Yeah, as with most of the engineer books, there are sort of two parallel um, parallel storylines going on because Anne, as part of her Anne Kinnear sensing ability, uh, doesn't usually get involved with the crime-related storyline until a little later in the story. And so I have to have Anne doing something to keep the readers, the Anne fans' attention until Anne gets involved in the crime side of it. And so it starts out that Anne has been invited to a um, crime fiction conference called Gotham Con. And um, she's been asked to do a talk on how to make the supernatural super in your novel. And Anne is not somebody who likes talking about what she does outside her, the context of her engagements. And she really doesn't like public speaking. So she's not really excited about this. Um, but she has a uh, liaison to the conference um, who is uh, who is the connection between Anne and then the crime uh, the crime side of the story that's going on. And so I got to tap into, for example, my experiences with writers' conferences for that part of it. And uh, simultaneously, the reader is seeing a um, a cozy mystery author named Marilee Forsyth, who's had decided that her true love is really, she really wants to write thriller novels. And so she's trying to uh, get the money to buy her contract out with her publisher so that she can um, get out of that contract in order to write thriller novels. And she's pressuring her son and daughter-in-law in order to get that money back. She's loaned them some money and she needs the money back now. And um, then things go from there. She's not an overly sympathetic character. Um, and so that brings me to the part that I've probably found the most fun. And, and that is trying to guess which in the world of all the fabulous characters one runs across at Bowser Con, Killer Nashville, Thriller Fest, all of the big cons. Was there any that either inspired you for um, the uh, either of the two plot lines? But you don't have to answer that. That would be like violating, you know, all <laughs> sacred trust with other authors. But my brain was going. <laughs> well, I can say honestly that Marilee Forsyth, who's the the unpleasant, cozy mystery author, was not at all inspired by a particular person. It, she was only inspired in the sense that I have seen that oftentimes authors have very different personas between the persona they present to the public. And then sometimes you get glimpses of the other persona when you're at events like conferences. And that's not necessarily that they're nice to their fans and they're, they're made <laughs> in real life, but there is sometimes a difference. Right. And so I just thought that that idea that you really have to be kind of playing a role, especially Merrily is a as a cozy mystery author, her publisher is pretty much, her publisher is kind of ghostwriting some of her books and except for the endings, which Marilee's excellent at endings. And, um, but the publisher needs Marilee as a, as a face in the place, as the public persona of the, um, the Barry mysteries, which is what she writes. All each of her books is based on a Barry, Mulberry murder, Raspberry ransom. Okay. And, um, I did have fun with that. It was very hard to come up with cozy, cozy titles that weren't already taken. Um, but uh, yeah, just that idea that there is that difference between the public persona and the private persona. You know, you really see it when you go to fantasy conventions and people are totally cosplaying and they're there as their characters and, you know, sexy vampire woman who by day is mom of five kids homeschooling, you know, whatever, whatever yeah. the difference in persona is. Um, 
and it's fun to play with it with the thriller, uh, a cozy to thriller type of author, because we don't usually see those giant um, switches, but you do see shifts between public and, uh, and um, private. So now for you, a lot of these books you said came from real life. You talked about settings and, and the, being a pilot. How much of Anne Kinnear comes somewhere from deep within Maddie Dalrymple? Well, I like to say that um, Anne is me, except younger, thinner, and she can see dead people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good line. <laughs> but many of the, and I sort of resisted this at first, and then eventually I just said, no, I'm just going to lean into this. Like, there's always a joke that Anne is always dressed as if she buys all her clothes from L.L. Bean. That's pretty much direct. There you go. <laughs> and... Um, I think Anne, at the time she spent in Maine, uh, she loves the same things about Maine that I do. The time she spends in her home base of Chester County, she loves the same things about that. I think Anne is not very much of a people person, um, yeah. but she has a core group of family and friends that she very much relies on because, primarily because she has had unpleasant experiences in her life about people either thinking that she's um, crazy or um, lying about her ability. And so she's kind of insulated herself with this a core group of people. And that group of people is expanding. Like I think over the course of the series, um, you see that her, her circle is getting a little bit bigger with each book. Um, but, you know, as someone who, myself, who watched the movie Cast Away and thought, you know, if there was a dentist on the island, that would actually be so bad. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm someone who's very happy staying in my little cocoon. And so I kind of tap yeah. into that for Anne as well. I think that's probably why you and I hit it off. Dogs, uh, yes. crime fiction writing. And I, I'm very happy living up on the face of a mountain. I just got back from London, which was way too people-y for, for me. But but great yeah. to visit. And you have family there. You have in that area, Oxford kind of area. Yeah, I do. I have a I have a sister, Mary Dalrymple, who um, is retired now, but taught linguistics at Oxford for many years. Um, so for a time, we, I spent a lot of time in the UK, uh, not so much over the last couple of years, but I'm hoping to start doing that again soon. Well, um, you know, I was wondering about you and travel. Definitely, I see you traveling to Maine, both in the books and in real life. But if, if you had a favorite place to be in the world or to travel to that you have traveled to, what would it be? Well, I have to say that an experience I just had. So this was the first, my first experience of traveling via commercial airliner since 2019. Wow. And um, the last travel I did in 2019 was a cruise between Hawaii and Vancouver. And uh, my husband and I just went on a cruise that left Fort Lauderdale and was a Caribbean cruise. And I, I mean, both of those destinations were beautiful, but I have to say that being on the water, I just, I just love being on the water. It was, I think, four days between Hawaii and Vancouver, maybe three, I can't remember. Um, that was just on the water, no stops. You know, you just look out, there's just ocean everywhere. I just love that. And so I'm starting to think that one of my favorite destinations is any ocean where I can't see land. <laughs> well, it is, it's so peaceful. It's yeah. rhythmic. It's the sounds, it's the smells. It's just, it's all wonderful. Well, yeah. and Maine has a lot of water, but it's a little rough off the coast of Maine. It's not quite as usually as peaceful, blissful sailing. I guess you're on a big enough ship, it would be. <laughs> yeah, I have done some kayaking around Maine, but um, I'm def I generally definitely, I generally stay near the coast. But one time I did decide that I was going to paddle out from the cabin where we were staying to this island, which didn't look that far away from the cabin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I got to it and I thought, I'll just go around it and go back. And this was miles, like, I oh, think in, in the course of that paddle, I went miles um, because the island turned out to be very long. <laughs> so, and there was a lot more island than it looked like. Um, and always half of it is with the with the um, currents yeah. or the tide and half of it is not. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you're getting a lot of agreement comments on loving the water and loving oh, peace. Good. <laughs> um, so uh, before we switch into what I call the speed round, where we're just silly and ask a lot of questions, I did want to ask you about your side projects, your podcast, the indie author uh, podcast that you do. So tell us about that. I'm sure people want to tune in. Yeah. Uh, well, I do have a nonfiction platform called The Indie Author. It's Indie with a Y, I-N-D-Y. And I have a weekly podcast called the Indie Author Podcast, where we talk about the writing craft and the publishing voyage. And I'm emphasizing those words because I love 
you can see I have my my boat picture over there. Yes. Um, I love I have not found any part of the writing craft or the publishing voyage that you can't describe with a nautical metaphor. And mm -hmm. so um, I uh, interview people in writing and publishing about that. I also have uh, two nonfiction books. I have a bunch of resources on theindieauthor.com for uh, podcasting for authors, short fiction, um, creating a story frame. Those are some of the, the topics that I've kind of delved into in detail myself. So knowing that oftentimes readers are writers as well, I appreciate the opportunity to mention that. Absolutely. I was just going to say that I know a lot of people, um, especially in my group, are also authors and you should really check it out. This is a woman who knows what she's talking about. She writes very well, plotted tight stories, great structure. So you can learn a lot from her, not just about writing, but about the whole field of being an indie author, which many of us um, these days are. So if you get the yeah. opportunity. Um, so let's move to the speed round, Maddie. Now the speed round, as you guys know, is where we talk about questions that are roughly similar to what everyone's asking. So we're getting, without giving them much time to pause or think, um, look into ways in which they are similar and ways in which they're different. So we'll start with um, one where I always try to guess the answer first. Are you a plotter or a pantser? Do you want to say your guess first? I think you're a plotter. Yes, I am a plotter. <laughs> Yay! Very much. Oh, we should do this where I get prizes if I get your answers right. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> now, I figured you were just because of some of the topics that you cover so well in your podcast. Um, that oh, that showed you. a lot of attention to craft and to structure and, and things like that. I find it hard to write by pants with crime fiction. Have you tried before? Well, the first book I wrote, I wrote one chapter. There was I started writing it because there was one scene in my head that was very vivid to me and I had to write a whole book around it which was very inefficient because I had to do a lot of back and forth right. and I also with book uh, five and I actually wrote an article about this for Writer's Digest that led to the idea of story framing book five was was I had to do so much rewriting because I think one thing is if you're writing especially a mystery and you have to be planting clues and things like that 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 takes a certain amount of planning and um also, I think that that a certain amount of planning avoids the, you know, what would be cooler. You know, what would be cooler is like the phrase that pops into my mind that has cost me more words and more time than any <laughs> other as a writer. And <laughs> once you've thought of something cooler, you really can't do it, right? I know, like, and at first you're like, it's not that cool. I mean, it might be cooler, but I, it's a lot of work. And then it sticks with you and you're like, dang it. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. would be cooler. Yeah. <laughs> That's a wonderful, that's a wonderful way to challenge yourself though. What would be cooler than this? What might be a little bit cooler? Um, all right. So uh, I also think I know the answer to this, but I'm asking it anyway, because there's something behind you. I want people to see dog or cat person. Dog. dog. There he is. Is this he, right? That one, it's a she. A she. Riffin. Sorry. Sorry. Riffin. <laughs> she's sort of boyish looking though. She's kind of a, she's kind of a tomboyish looking dog. <laughs> So yeah, there's that dog. Um, and do you have a particular um, writer fin, sh fin shui? Do you go to a particular spot or wear a particular outfit? Do you have s rituals you repeat? How do you get in the flow? Well, I, every day, uh, except Friday from 2.30, from 12.30 to 2, I have a virtual writing sprint with a, a circle of fellow authors. And so that's a great marker in my day. I spend the morning doing admin, marketing, promotional kind of stuff. And then at 1230, I switch and I try to stick with the fiction or writing, the fiction or nonfiction um, from 1230 until cocktail hour. <laughs> that sounds good. Well, we'll talk about cocktail hour in just a second. But I think it's important for people to realize that um, all authors, especially indie authors, you're running a business. And so, in, you know, in, in, in addition, Maddie's got her podcast as well, which is part of the business, but separate. And yeah. it keeps so many hours occupied that you do have to say, this is my writing time. It may not be much, but I claim it. I keep it and I'm going to make it efficient Yeah, <laughs> with my story framing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. All right. So let's um, let's switch that gear to happy hour and it's happy hour. You can either tell me what Anne's ordering or you or both if you're going to happy hour together. So Anne and I would both order McAllen on the rocks with two rocks. 
Do I two rocks? Do you like the big fat rocks? Or you like two just normal size? Well, if they have the big fat rocks, there there is a restaurant that has that thing that like compresses the ball of ice so that it stays ice for yes. a long time. That's the best. But I actually looked into that. Those the machines that do that are hundreds of dollars. No kidding. Um, so I'm happy with two just regular out of the freezer rocks. <laughs> I didn't realize they were so expensive. It just yeah. Ice cube to me. But anyway, yeah. I love them. <laughs> yeah, they are very cool. Yeah, literally. <laughs> literally. So um, it, it, now, do you have a particular office that you that you claim as your space? Because the question is, what's the silliest thing you keep in your writing space or your office? Well, I do have two office spaces. One is downstairs. It's right off the kitchen. It's where the dogs normally are. Yeah. And so um, I spend a lot of time there. But I found that if I'm upstairs, and this is the room that I use primarily for my podcast recording or interview recordings and things like that, uh, because I have my whole like microphone set up here and things like that. But sometimes I realize that if I just come up here, I get a lot more work done because I don't fall into the... Um, uh, you know, now I want to go out. Now I want to come in. Now I want to drink of water. Now I want you to pet me. Um, <laughs> so sometimes I just have to get away. Much as I love my three dogs, sometimes it's helpful to get away from them. And then I have to say, probably the silliest thing I have is I was on this kick where I was going to, um, I, I have a little mini elliptical, which I really like. And I thought in order to encourage myself to do that more, I'm going to get a five minute timer, uh, like an hourglass timer. And I'm going to use that to remind myself to get away from the computer and hop on my elliptical for five minutes. And it's the silliest thing in my office because I have to say, I never use it for that. <laughs> I, I, I hear all this advice about stand up once an hour, take a 10 minute break, walk around. And I thought, Oh, what a great idea. And then I'll set my alarm. Not often, but when I do, and I, and I think I just got to write one more thing. Or it's gonna exactly. Do and it then is you know, freakishly yeah. difficult to step away from that. Freakishly. Yes, that was a good word for it. Um, okay, so you win the lottery. What are the first five things that change about your life that you buy that you get? So I'm going to buy the five adjoining properties to our house and then take the houses off them so that I have a much, much larger lot. <laughs> Cast away with a dentist, right? Exactly. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, oh my gosh, I do love that. Okay. Um, and in the writing process, what's your favorite part? The pre-work, first draft, research, rewrite, you know, final polish. What do you like? Well, it, this isn't really a defined part, but I find that that very often, surprisingly often, when I'm mulling over an issue, you know, as I'm writing, I say, Oh, uh, this could be more suspenseful, or is this real? Does this really make sense that they would do this at this point? I write all these little notes to myself, and it's so gratifying when I solve one problem and I realize I've solved more than one problem. And I don't know if that's just because my subconscious is working away on it, but it is like surprisingly often you think, Oh, that solves that problem. Oh, and you know what? Um, yeah. it, it helps with the you know what would be cooler issue. Um, so yeah. uh, you know, I write because I love, love those moments when that happens. Isn't it funny how much of writing feels painful and then those moments make it worth it? Does yeah. that happen to you? Or you're like, I'm not sure why I do this. This is awful. And then that magic moment happens and it made the whole book worth it. That, but it makes it worth it for the reader too. And you kind of yeah. know that when you have those moments, like this fixes this book. Now, now, now it's ready to go forth into the world. Um, we have someone that's joined us a little bit late that wanted me to remind them about the genre you write. So Maddie writes um, suspense. So with respect to the series we're talking about right now, the Anne Kinnear series are suspense novels about a woman who solves mysteries um, with help from um, her ability to sense dead people. So she sees dead people and she sees them in a way that is not woo woo. She sees them in a way that is a burden on her life. Like it's difficult, you know, it's difficult to be her. So I love these books, um, Patty. And if you enjoyed some of mine that had supernatural elements to them as well, where we, that's another thing M Maddie and I have in common. We don't write about what I call paranormal. It, this is a suspense novel that Maddie writes, a crime fiction novel with 
the slight twist being that the um, protagonist also is able to use her sensing of the dead, but real life things happen to her too. <laughs> she manages to get in a lot of hot water um, along the way to solving her crimes. So um, last question for you then, if you or Anne or both had a theme song, what would your theme song be? Oh my gosh. I, this is, this is probably a terrible one to end on because I, um, <laughs> I'm not a music listener and I regret saying this because my husband is a musician. He has a, um, he has a band called Anthem Arcade that plays in the Philadelphia and greater metropolitan area. And I love all his music. Much of the music he plays is from my era when I was listening to a lot of music, like back in the eighties, he does sort of, um, uh, arena rock tribute kind of stuff oh, and I love all that but I was I was running through that and I'm like you know I should start listening to music while I'm writing because Anne doesn't listen to music either it was a it was an interesting question to ponder I don't really think I have a good answer for it that is a good answer though and you know this eerie why did I why did I think Maddie down Dal so cool when I met her um <laughs> list of things my husband um, is a bass player and he's not currently in a band, but his entire adult life has been in bands once open for Natalie Merchant and 10,000 Maniacs. I mean, he's a serious musician. No kidding. That's fantastic. It's, it's really, it's really cool. That's um, so exciting. But he plays that same type of music a lot of the time. So anyway, and I just, I had these vibes with you v vibing, vibing. Um, you guys, I'm not going to just recommend Be With The Dead. I'm going to recommend that you start with Sense of the Dead if you haven't read the series yet because it really is worth it. It's a super book. Um, and what I enjoy, another thing I enjoy about your series is that the books are not cookie cutters of each other. They are very different uh, mysteries within the series. And so you'll get a lot of gratification, I think, out of um, out of at least reading those two, if not running the table on the whole series. And uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing about it with us today, this Maddie. Is, this has been so much fun. I especially appreciate you coming right off your, your whirlwind tour of Europe and, <laughs> and still plugging away at this. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun. You're welcome. I'm going straight back to bed. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> okay, you guys, so everybody give Maddie a wave goodbye. And we are going to wrap this thing up. If you want to watch past shows, you go out to my website, PamelaFaganHutchins.com. You can see which shows are upcoming. You can find my books, including new releases, Sitting Duck and Bighorn. And you can also um, then find out how to access those books. Uh, Ebook and it's uh, Kindle and Kim Kindle Unlimited, but large back, large large print, um, hardback, et cetera, all out there, audio uh, everywhere. Um, Crime and Wine is a copyrighted and solely owned by authors of the Air Global Radio Network show. Uh, last two comments are three. Woo, we had a bunch at the end. Jeff Crawford says, terribly interesting interview. Um, Christine Ellis, definitely will check out her books. And uh, uh, also had a rock and roll comment. That one was from my husband. So you guys take care and thanks for tuning in with me again this week. Thanks for joining us today on Crime and Wine, chats with crime fiction authors and Pamela Fagan Hutchins. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll check back in with us next time for more thrills, suspense, and stories that will mystify, sometimes horrify, and always leave you wanting more.